everybody, and welcome to Publish Me, Punish Me, a comedy series that's examining deal practices in the games industry. My name is Ava Carr, founder and CEO at Glitch. And my name is Sana. I am the studio director of Perfect Garbage, and I go through a light change to this episode. Stay tuned. Each episode, we'll dive into indie publishers, crowdfunding, equity deals, and more. Whether it's the good, the bad, or just the plain yikes, we're going to talk about all of it. If you enjoy listening to a mess of friends talk about game development, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel below. What's on the board today, son? I'm excited. Well, don't be. What are you giving no. me that face? Oh. <laughs> I'm teasing. Okay. So today I really wanted to talk about as someone who's had experience like crowdfunding, talking to publishers, pitching, that whole spiel how to judge the cost of your game and how does that reflect how you talk to publishers, platforms, and all of that. I guess to start off with is like the super ridiculously broad question of how much a game should cost. How much should a game cost? How? Five how do you dollars. Know? <laughs> okay. You know, I might, maybe I should probably change it to how much does it cost to make the game you want to make? I mean, they cost a lot of money to make, especially ones that you like publish and ship and get it out there and ones that people actually want to buy and play and tell their friends about it. How much does the game cost? It comes back to like time. How much time is it going to take to make it? I didn't even think about using time frame. I always think about like salary base, even though that's correct. There is a time frame thing happening in there. Yeah. But like salary base is usually my... Yeah. I mean, like when you're starting your studio, that makes a lot of sense. It's always about like, well, how much money do I actually have? Um, and then how much time can I squeeze out of that versus like, the other way around? Squeeze. Like, like you literally squeeze. squeeze as much as you can out of like $20,000. We've seen games that are made with uh, just time, but that comes with a lot of privilege right? Um, If you have free time in that way, there are games that are made just in a weekend or in a couple of days or in a couple of months with friends who are just putting in their time. Um, And then there are like hundreds of millions of dollars in AAA games. So indie games are like somewhere in there. Here's like a weekend game and here's like, I don't know, League of Legends. <laughs> the the ultimate indie. And then indies are like over <laughs> yeah. here. <laughs> when I will admit, when I started making a VN, I did think I could speed run it. And oh no, was I wrong? So it takes like, yeah, it took like a couple years to make a VN. Yeah. And uh, I can only imagine it increasing exponentially based on the type of project. Like you already know that we're thinking about something else and we have to change our mm-hmm. entire time frame compared yeah. to our last game. So you want you're making a game. You want to sell it to, not sell it, but you need to get funding sources. Yeah. And you've never made a game before. You don't know exactly how long it's going to take. You don't know uh, how much like the usual indie salaries cost. How can you figure out the price of your game? Because I know my answer was I looked at other crowdfunding sources, but how how do you like make that magical number? Like even as a starting basis before talking to a publisher. It started with research, right? Like I'm sure you did something very similar. Like it just started with so much research about like who's currently all out there, um, which publishers are there, uh, what type of ways are they funding? Um, some of those publishers do absolutely no funding and they do like marketing and help. People do not talk yeah. about how much it costs to make an indie game. Yeah. Uh, I struggled. Like I'm not going to pretend I didn't have a nightmare experience in trying to yeah. figure out how much my game would cost in comparison to other games. Some of that has changed, uh, like not to plug in glitch, but the pitch yeah. decks like work really, really yeah, well yeah. in like kind of gauging like what you need to talk to a publisher with. And that can help you figure out your finances and your budget and things like that. And I mean, us creatives are notoriously bad at estimating time. Yeah. That's why we have producer <laughs> friends who can help us with that, right? Like yeah. I think really when it com- came down to it, it was about looking at what comparables there were and then also matching that up with what um, not only publishers but platforms are really looking at in terms of their price ranges. It really comes down to what is it that you want to make and then you have to figure out um, who your perfect match is for the type of game that um, they ship and then the, the, the amount that it costs to make almost has to be kind of in line with that partner right like Mm -hmm. 
if you go to a publisher that doesn't typically fund with money, then um, you're at the wrong place for a $1 million game. Uh, this makes me think of something really, uh, really rough to say. A little something mm. a, little, a little spicy. In indie development, we often make our salaries pretty low to make it so mm. that we can make the game. And like, just get it. Um, so let's say even asking the $600,000, let's say game, but you have eight, nine people working on it mm-hmm. and you want to get close to full time. That's it. Like that 600,000 is gone in two years tops. Like that sounds like a lot of money, but it's not. And then each people, each person, because I've done this math recently, <laughs> each yeah. person is making around maybe 20 K, which is, mm-hmm. a, which is below minimum wage. Yeah. That's uh, really for well. the year. Yeah. I think it's interesting that we can talk about these numbers and we talk about how to judge a game, how to make a game, who to ask for. But it's like, this is your debut game and you're just starting and you try to want to make sure that the people that you're working with can survive. So it's these circumstances of working more than one job, doing the bare minimum amount of money to pay each person enough yeah. in the vaguest of terms yeah. that lets you sell your game. All of this already sounds really skewed in like one yeah. direction. Um, We even joked about it earlier when you said, if it's a solo dev and you have the time to make your own game, we can argue the privilege behind it. So the real hecking question is, are game costs that you research real in the indie sphere? This is like, again, not to bring up something personal, but when we kickstarted Love Shore, we asked for a higher end of what a VN usually asks on Mm -hmm. Kickstarter. But we had learned through the development of it that it was significantly low. Yeah. Um, to run us for two years. For anyone looking, we, we got around 56K uh, yeah. for a part, team of eight for two years of game development. If the question that you're trying to pose is, are indie developers asking for too little money for the production of their game? The answer is yes. So then how do you like, research it? You know what I mean? Like, I just want to go on Google, like, how much does it cost to make an RPG? And then it yeah. tells me this beautiful mythical number. And yeah. then I'm like, that's it. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It's- It's wild, but, you know, ultimately it's what will people pay for it. And right now publishers aren't paying the same amount as, say, like a film is Mm -hmm. uh, or like a film studio or a film publisher is. Uh, So I think the biggest question is when is that going to change? And uh, I'm curious as to when it will. Okay, so I've got a hot game. I I figured out an asking price. The way to approach who to talk to is different. Uh, I know we've talked about it before about figuring out the best kind of situation to get your funding or whatever help you might need. So if it's marketing Mm -hmm. or porting or all this stuff. It's about figuring out yourself um, before you ask about your funding. Um, What is it that matters to you most? There's a ton of different ways to get your game funded. And I I mean, like, Sun, you have explored a lot of them. For me, um, I did grants. I did equity and I did platform. So Sun, for you, you've primarily done crowdfunding. Crowdfunding and equity. And you're interested in equity. The thing with the crowdfunding is that there's so much nuance to how you do it because there's different approaches completely. Like, are you kickstarting, Indiegogo, things like that? Or are you doing like a Patreon monthly thing? Yeah. What is it that you're really looking for? Like how, what does that look like? How do you negotiate that? How do you talk about it with that person? Sometimes you undersell yourself because you just really need that like final push. But by underselling yourself, you're asking too low to a publisher. And so they don't deem the game, what you're making as valuable, right? So like there is a connection, like Jokes aside. The how to negotiate really starts with like knowing yourself, what you want, and also trying your hardest to evaluate your worth. You know, like I even talk to you all the time, like I do market research on Kickstarters and what the average number is. And so what you can ask for as a first game versus what it just will never work. Uh, You know, the one thing I learned like talking to you and a bunch of other folks is that a lot of, especially indie devs are very willing to talk about it. If you shoot the DM and you're like, hey, I'm doing this. Do you mind giving me some insider information on how to do it? And I have never had a, a someone say no. People are trying to make a living making games. Yeah. Um, and I, I think at the end of the day, it's really important to share a lot of this type of information and to share a lot of knowledge um, and to do it in a way that doesn't jeopardize you or each other or your friends or um, your peers in the process, which is why PMPM is all anonymous. I do have some deals. Uh, I'm going to be honest in that I don't remember if they were mean. <laughs> like, so this them. is going to be a surprise for both of us. 
can't remember if they're both bad or they're both good. <laughs> so we'll go through it together. For this game, they used a partnership grant that allowed their video game to be created. So in the summer mm, of 2017, grant. I know, grants, me like shocked, grants exist. <laughs> Every time I'm like, well, you live in Chicago. They don't have arts grants. They don't have anything. So in the summer of 2017, the grant group that they worked with put out a call out for developers of marginalized backgrounds to apply that could possibly lead to a year's worth of funding of game development. They weren't going to apply at first as a full-time graphic designer working on their own personal projects is a rarity that they can't really afford. And we've also talked about that kind of situational circumstances a lot of the time that indies face as they're working on their own projects that were meaningful to them and to other people from their cultural background they kind of motivate themselves into pitching towards that grant. So they are pitching to a nonprofit grant. The support that they were looking for was just the game development, mentorship, and funds that were promised with the grant. And their funding tier was up to 50K US dollars. Mm -hmm. The terms of the deal was that they had to present their game at kind of like an end of the year event that the mm -hmm. grant was probably a part of. But yeah, that was the situation. So they weren't going to do their own project. They saw that this grant allowed them to maybe make something that was more closer to home mm -hmm. in their free time and actually sustain that. Uh, and they reached out. You mentioned earlier the beautiful things about grants in that. I love grants. Yeah. Why don't you tell, why well, do you like grants? Tell me. The, uh, the majority of, I like the majority of grants. I like the essence of grants. My, my guess is that this funding is um, free, nothing, nothing come, like no strings attached. The only deliverable was please make the game and um, show it off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dope. Like great good on you um, for applying. I feel like with grants in particular, some of the first steps are just like getting there to apply. It is so challenging sometimes to take a look at some of those grants. Like I just did one recently, like I did a Bush Foundation grant for the Bush Fellowship and Archibald Bush, by the way, 3M related, not other Bush is Bushes, not other Bushes. Do you know um, that I didn't know this until right now? Oh, the really? whole time I was like, dang, I'm taking George Bush money. No! <laughs> yeah, I thought that too. The whole application process is like, it takes so much energy, right? Um, from mm. the writing of the application. Sometimes those applications can be up to like 10 to 12 pages of written content, no visual content. Um, so it's not like a pitch deck. From there on, there are interviews sometimes and there are next rounds and um, there might be even committees that take a look at your uh, review and you have to go talk to the committee. Um, it really depends on who it is, but I feel like the the fact that this person started um, and and got excited about it and got excited about something that they wanted to make, it's really, really good that they just started applying. And I personally think that grants are dope for like true experimentation. No, like you, it doesn't need to have a commercial purpose. It's just something that you want to make and you want to get out there in the world, which I think is really beautiful. I don't even know if there's anything else to talk about other than like, I would take it. It's funding yeah. to make a thing that I really want to exist that no one else would probably yeah. fund because, you know, they need their return on it. Yeah. I was going to say grants are very sexy because you do not have to yeah. pay it back most of the time. But they do, know. but you do have to like, they are taxed. Deliver. Oh, like, yeah. They are taxed. How could I forget? Yeah, how Unless... could you forget? Because you got one from Game Devs of Color. Don't. I don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am still mourning about taxes. <laughs> I I tried every, I mean, like, almost said every trick in the book. Like, some kind of, like, <laughs> I tried CEO. every way to be able to use all yeah. of that money. I was like, how many, how much office supplies do we need for the next yeah. two years? Do you need a new computer? Do you need a Does computer? Who, who needs a subscription of Photoshop? <laughs> yeah. um, sadly, I failed. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, the, the one thing about grants is, though, is that they are taxed. So it is something that you really have to think about and really have to consider. So for example, with my Bush Fellowship, it was $100,000 and I had to at, like they give you an option to either use it all at once in one year or you use it over two years. And I was like, two years, please. Um, Cause you have to pay taxes on that still. Always save one third. It sounds like yeah. crazy knowledge, but just save one yeah. third. Yeah, I take it. They did. I mean, again, grants, how could you say no? 
They added some other details, but this experience for them was really eye-opening and has really motivated them into getting into game design and more game development work. They were able to express their cultural background and finally have representation in a medium that they really love. Whenever there's a story with like a good outcome that one is happy with, Mm -hmm. Uh, especially when they're entering games. I'm always like, oh, we we made it, boys. We got one in. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. Are you going to give me only sweet ones? That's so unlike you. Oh, probably not. Like, I, there was a reason I felt ominous. You don't even know what you did or which deals are coming up, but it already feels yeah, ominous man, to you I, because of who you are. I <laughs> remember why I left this one in its whole entirety. Um, and it's because it sounds like a very, very personal experience. I don't mean that like it's a unique experience because yeah. it's an experience that has radiated with me. I'm sure it'll radiate with yeah. a bunch of people. Resonate. Radiate. Like, fall three. <laughs> Ooh, the radiation. Um... <laughs> But it's an experience that I, I don't feel is as uncommon as we think. Um, and it does discuss uh, kind of like a journey. So, I'm already sad because you said yeah, that. Yeah, be it's sad. Uh, it's not sad, but it is definitely like you, as soon as I get into it, you'll be like, I know this process. <laughs> I'll read it from their point of view. But I've been on a team of indie darling games before that had turned the lead devs greedy and sour. Mm-hmm. I know, it's rough. They made all the wrong decisions and I wanted to be better, so I ventured out on my own to make wholesome games and content. We're making a narrative-heavy game with a female protag, and it's everyone's first project aside myself. I know this vibe. Oh, damn. Um, I was yeah. encouraged by well-meaning friends to do what the white boys in hoodies, you know, we made that joke earlier, the guy with the graphic tee and then the... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the, blazer. what is that? Thank the blazer. You. The blazer. <laughs> and ask for big dollar signs, like we're a AAA. So okay. I gave everyone on staff, the four of us in total, modest AAA competitive salaries in our budget. Which is like $50,000. Honestly, yeah. I was going to be like maybe 50 to 70. Like that's like, <laughs> I, I was recently seeing, not to diverge, but I recently saw that post that you worked really hard on that made like that graphic that Excel of like yeah, yeah. all average video game salaries and yeah. it actually reshaped my structure earlier oh my God. this today. There's, there's now like seven or 800 people who have submitted anonymously yeah. their salaries. I love the graphics too that you include. Like, <laughs> like you have uh, like ethnic demographics, you have yeah. gender, you have yeah. like, it's, 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 it's a very good piece of able-bodied or disabled. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. I'm saying this is a little bit of transparency we need. This is good. <laughs> um, okay, my pitch deck was solid, but my game is divisive both in content and art and there isn't a game like it that i can point to as a guaranteed success they have no market vibes between that and the large budget we were denied over and over some were cruel some laughed at me someone laughed at them what jerk faces i know i'm like i'm getting heated (laughs) like reading it some were kind but explained it was too much money or that there isn't enough evidence to prove the investment was worth it which is, I think, a big roadblock in a lot of indie games that are being experimental in any way. I had many sleepless nights and panic attacks. If I could do it over, I wouldn't have listened to that advice. Um, the advice to tell them to go big. Wouldn't have tried to be bigger than we are, and honestly, I don't know if I would have pitched it at all. It is stressful, and then the publisher owns so much, and you owe them so much. It might be years before we see a profit if we owed money to a publisher. We're struggling, but doing fine on our own. We're getting creative with how we're paying for production. And then when the game starts selling, we'll own all of the pie, you know, minus the 30% Mm -hmm. from Steam. Shout out Steam. I think we might seek a publisher when it comes to trying to go console or for more help with marketing. But I don't know if a publisher paying for production is prudent anymore. Then again, I'm not a white boy in a hoodie. So maybe the rules are different for me. So That one just felt like gut punches. Brutal. (laughs) It just was like, it it started off with like, I'm not a white dude. Punch. <laughs> and then it was like, I wanted it, I, like, I salaries. Just, yeah, I wanted the AAA salaries at 50k a year, like uppercut. <laughs> like, they pitched everybody. They said they tried publishers, investors. They had grants that they weren't blind to, even contests. Mm-hmm. They said they even did one for a soda company contest. That's like <laughs> how. So they did their they did their due diligence. Yeah. You know, is and what they were I trying think. really hard. Yeah, to get it funded. And for the support that they were asking, they, they wrote it like they were asking for everything. And I know it sounds really ominous, but when I read what they were asking for, porting, localization, marketing, they're asking for the normal thing that you would ask for publishing. Yeah, to, it's like it's the bare minimum. They're asking, and this is what also hurt me, they're asking for 200 to 500K, which as you know- the Magical number, feel, that sounds like a lot. Yeah. It sounds like a lot, but a lot of 
games that you enjoy now, like the, I don't want to say bigger indie, but like the games like right before huge indie are yeah. in that price range. Um, yeah. So it's a common What people have been calling triple I, which I'm still not sure if I buy into yet. As it grows darker in my apartment. Um, ominous. Should I turn on the light? <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> okay. So for the terms... Um, and I, what I'm assuming based on this is like terms that they have maybe most often come across yeah. during these pitching deals, um, that they would own the IP, we pay them back and they take a cut for X amount of years. They don't go into detail on whether or not they ever like fully got an offer, or maybe this could just okay. be in the negotiation amounts that they would hear before sure. they got an okay. offer. Okay. Okay. Cause I've had that experience where they kind of tell you vaguely what a deal yeah. entails before getting a deal. There's a little bit more I just want to finish really quick. So funding ourselves means it's hard for the first two games or so, but then passive income starts coming in and that funds extra games. So the two game hurdle, which I also have talked about to you all the time. Yeah. Um, I feel more comfortable with that than forever owning thousands of dollars to a publisher or funder. Um, I had to wine and dine for the privilege of being in debt. Oh my gosh, that language. I they know, had to I wine and dine for the privilege of being in debt. Thanks for sending that, whoever you are. That was really painful, and I'm sorry that you experienced that. I don't think there's a situation we can talk about the outcome. Clearly, the outcome has been no up to this point. How they handled the situation yeah. is that they talked to their team. They came up with creative ways to pay everyone for their work. Um, yeah. They got really drunk one night and rambled to fellow game devs, which yeah. always, always that recommend. Sounds like the best. Right. Um, <laughs> they didn't get any offers, but I'll never work with people who are mean. Um, or heard that the rejections yeah. were in, uh, unnecessarily cruel, um, yeah. even if I become an indie darling and they seek me out, which I think spite is a huge motivator. So I'm like, yes, I love that sentence. I'm glad you're mad. <laughs> and they, it sounds like they stood their ground too on what they really wanted. I think it's truly important that we need to hear these stories because yeah. I think that those who are successful and who make it like through this gap are always in the limelight and not for not, they deserve it. Like they equally deserve it. But if you're getting into games, you don't hear about the failures or you don't hear about the obstacles unless you are talking to other game devs or in a community already. Especially in games, there's a lot of survivor bias. You do hear a lot of stories from the folks who have made it um, because the folks who haven't might just never talk about it or never get the opportunity to talk about it or might just feel so crappy after um, having so many people be rude to them that they might not feel like they belong or that this isn't the space for them. No matter what uh, folks say about approaching projects with... um your own happiness in mind and things like that, which I agree. But spite is very powerful. And I'm not going to pretend it's not. I'm not going to be a better person about it. It shouldn't be your only motivator ever mm -hmm. because you will be miserable. Mm -hmm. But spite can really push you to do what naysayers say you can't. Mm -hmm. And I am someone who really values that. And that mm -hmm. it, it, and I was actually really happy to read that you had it because it usually implies that you're going to prove people wrong. I am on the opposite side of you, son. Um, I like my approach and what I've tried my hardest to do is just to continue to find people who add energy and continue to give me more energy so that I am stronger, but everyone can have a different approach, right? Like sure. that's totally okay. Um, I think I am oftentimes very spiteful in the moment where I'm like, mm, but then I try my hardest to let it go. Even in the situation, they worked with their team and tried to get, make a game plan. I have found that those who have survived these kinds of situations have kept their cards close, i.e. their team members, those who are in the mm -hmm. situation with them, and have worked their best to figure out means to survive. It's probably way harder as a solo dev, but maybe there's less risk. It's always scarier when you have a team. I always think mm -hmm. because you have a I lot agree. of people riding on you. But hopefully you have a team that will uh, be able to go through that whole journey with you. And um, ultimately, it'll be, it'll be a story someday um, for you and also an experience to learn from. Two game hurdle. Third game is a start. 
<laughs> that's all. That's what I'm going by. Thank you, everybody, yeah. for joining us for this wonderful episode of Publish Me, Punish Me. I know the ending felt a little bit like the punish me part, but we hope that you at least learned something with us and had a laugh and enjoyed the ride. If you have past deals that you want us to discuss or you want to share, click the Google link form below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe uh, to our channel in addition to continuing the conversation with us over at uh, discord.gg slash a glitch. We'll see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye. You can't film when the sun is setting. (laughs) And I am the sun that is setting. (laughs) 